uh, Mercedes fans, uh, owners, and W140 fans. Um, today, I'm going to be doing a quick overview and walk around of the W140 uh, 300SD um, 1992 uh, vehicle, sedan, and white. Um, so just the front here, we have the windshield wipers for these windows, I mean for these uh, lights, sorry. Um, moving along to the side here, we have the 300SD, a Mercedes logo, and our lights. Um, this bar here, this uh, bar over here that stretches all the way along here is actually um, just a reverser light. Unfortunately, the entire bar doesn't light up, which uh, would look pretty cool, but it simply does not do that. So this is the key, um, which is used to start the engine and unlock the car. Um, this key also has the infrared blaster. Unfortunately, either the blaster or the receiver doesn't work, but you can still use the car using this button, which pops open the key. And there, this is one of three places where you can unlock and lock the car. So to unlock, you just twist the key to the left. And you get a visual authentication as well as audio since you hear the locks popping up. And once you lock it, you'll see a red light flashing and that means all the uh, locks are locked. One of the other ways or other places you can unlock the vehicle is on the trunk. Unlocking it shows the green LED, and locking it shows the red LED. Now we're just going to unlock the trunk, take a look at that. When unlocking the trunk, if you push this button down here, um, you should see a little latch pop up. Um, this is so that you can hold on to while opening, because on this diesel um, vehicle, this entire back gets pretty dirty, so you can open it like that. And if you have a look inside this very spacious trunk, in comparison to the key right there, you can see that we can fit, fit uh, a lot of articles inside this trunk. Um, you can also access the light bulbs from here, so if you need to replace the light bulb ever, you, uh, this is where you would do that. And um, as well on the back of the vehicle, we have these reverser antennae as well as our antenna for the radio and I will go into these reverser antennas into more detail a little bit later and to close the trunk if you grab a hold of this paddle once again slam it down and the paddle retracts now the last place to lock or unlock the vehicle is uh, on the passenger side with once again a lock here um, where you can unlock it, or uh, lock it, sorry, turning to the left with a visual authentication, and turning it to the right unlocks it with a green flashing light. So moving over to the driver's side, we're going to unlock the car and uh, take a look inside. Once we are seated inside, um, the first thing we're going to do is close this door, and as you can hear, we are pretty well uh, seal off from the outside world in terms of audio. So um, even when the engine is running, uh, these windows are soundproof. So they try and keep out as much of the noise as possible. Um, on the door, we have our uh, electric and automatic programmable and customizable seats, which move up and down, as well as the backrest and even the headrest moves up and down. Um, we also have our central locking system, so pressing this button locks all the uh, locks in the car and pressing it upwards unlocks all of them. Over here on this column we have our lights, so um, right now it's in the off position, turning it one there, these are your uh, daylight running lights, and turning them all the way to the right, these are your normal headlights. If you pull this lever out once, then that is your um, fog lights only for the front and pulling it out once more you get a light here and that means that the front fog lights and the rear fog lights are running and we also have our electric setting for our steering wheel right here pulling it in and out and up and down and we also have our paddle for our park or our parking brake 
So pulling it releases that pedal down there. And to lock it, just push that down and now we are in park. Okay, so next taking a look at the dashboard, we have our fuel indicator, our uh, oil temperature, our consumption on average, our oil pressure, our speedometer, this one is in kilometers, our odometer, uh, we have 204,000 kilometers, as well as a trip um, reader up here, and down here is an LED display um, with the outside temperature. We also have our RPM meter here and our a, a digital, I mean an analog clock right there. And um, all the paddles or levers on the steering wheel conventionally are moved to the left. So this one stick activates your turn signals as well as your windshield wipers and your high beams and low beams like that. And then we also have one more stick, which is your cruise kit. Moving in towards the middle, we have our um, center column, control column here. And we also have an audible um, buzzer to let you know when the key is inserted. And since the diesel model, we have a pre-glow button right here. When this yellow button goes out, you're free to turn the car on. But in the winter, it takes a little bit more time to heat up. Um, Taking a look at this little knob here, this knob is very interesting. Moving it to this bottom position, we can control the retraction and the extraction of the side windows. We also have control of setting the windows for the driver in this position. And we also have the option of setting our rear view mirror electrically as well. So when you have your vehicle programmed, um, pressing your program will set absolutely everything in the car to the driver. We also have power windows with auto mode and we have a child lock for the rear two windows. Right here we have our fader for front speakers and rear speakers, as well as our manual shift, I mean our automatic shifter. And uh, this button here activates a uh, sunscreen in the back which is electric and it also brings it back up we have heated seats on this vehicle as well our radio which has a cassette player and a radio and our climate control this vehicle does have air conditioning um, we also have our hazard lights and as well as a rear heated window button. And this button has an interesting feature. Um, for the driver, when they're driving and there's no passengers in the back, pressing this button here is actually going to slam the headrests down so you get more visibility out the back. We also have a nice chrome ashtray here with a light and a cigarette lighter. Um, and you can also remove the ashtray for cleaning by pulling on this lever and it just simply pops out and pushing it back in like that. Up over here we have more options for our climate control. So these two control this vent and the vent over here and these two control the vents over there and right here. And these buttons help the car adjust to what kind of temperature you want, whether you want hot or cold air flowing through your vehicle. Moving back to the uh, climate control um, this, uh, buttons here, um, I'm just going to run through a couple of them quickly. Uh, this button um, adjusts your heat for your driver's side, and this one adjusts your heat for your passenger side. This is the auto button for setting the, um, the direction of the airflow on the driver's side and the passenger side. And then you have um, upwards air using these, uh, both using these and the vents on the ground and just the floor vents, same on the passenger side. And in the middle we have our fan control, um, auto mode, minimum mode, and maximum mode. We also have air recirculation, air restoration which uses um, engine heat during the winter um, to uh, preserve preserve fuel when you are parked, um, a small amount of engine heat can be recirculated within the car. 
We also have our um, front window defrost and uh, defog, economy mode, power off, and switching between Celsius and Fahrenheit on the LED displays, which display the current temperature. Moving on to the passenger side, we have two buttons here. One of them opens the glove box, and the other opens a little sunglass case up here, since we don't have one up here. So you're stuck with using this one. It's a nice big uh, case here. Again, on the passenger side, we do have the same um, uh, programmable seat adjust with the headrest and all the bells and whistles. And moving here to your um, your uh, your compartment here in the middle, um, this compartment has a couple of settings. So instead of riding this low while driving, um, you can set it to two clicks, and it locks in like this and a third click which locks in like that and then to bring it back down you lift it all the way up and all the way down. In here we also have a little cubby um, with a very nice wooden um, door here. So now next we're going to uh, demonstrate to you um, sorry about the buzzer the uh, lights up here as well as the sunroof which is actually a moonroof so it doesn't have glass it just opens like this and closes and it also lifts up like that like on normal cars these days and pulls back down um, if we close the door or we turn this mode off this is the door lights, so when you open the door, the lights turn on. Unfortunately, this light doesn't work, but we have map reading lights for passenger and driver, as well as um, all lights turning on up here, except for this one, because as I said, the bulb is burnt. And these ones are courtesy lights for all the rear passengers, which turn on three lights over there, as well as the bottom lights on the doors. And finally, um, we also have these handles as well as mirrors with lighting um, for the driver and the passenger and the rear passengers as well. So now moving on to the rear passengers. Okay, so I've given myself a little bit of leg room, but even with the driver side um, uh, seat set to a comfortable position for a six foot person, a person can sit comfortably black here as well as one over here and sometimes one in the middle um, starting with once again the power windows as well as your lock and up here we have our um, mirrors with lighting and down here we have a pop-out ashtray with a cigarette lighter. We also have a compartment here for storing books and such. And uh, we have our climate um, regulator for the rear passengers. This vehicle doesn't have the personalated climate for the passengers in the rear, but it does have a mode of setting with the zero, nothing is blowing through here and all the air is directed to the air vents. And pushing it all the way up, it's only coming through here. And in the middle, you have a nice moderated mix. Now, we do keep in mind that this um, climate control um, switch back here only works with cooled air or when you're operating the air conditioning. So in the winter, hot air has to be forced through the legs by pressing the button on the leg on the passenger uh, side up there. Another very nice feature is um, our fold down headrest like this. And inside here, um, pressing this button here, we also have a nice velvet um, Lee covered cup holder and a cubby for storing um, items like books. Close it down and bring her back up. Um, a very nice feature too on these models, on the older Mercedes models, are included first aid kits inside the vehicle. So we have a very substantial first aid kit in there. 
And uh, one of the last features on the rear are these map reading lights, which b work on both sides. And uh, the light is directed right in the uh, occupant's lap, so it's a very ideal position for reading um, when the night is drive when the car is driving at night. Okay, so taking a step out, we're gonna take a look at the engine compartment. We're going to open the hood using this handle right here. To open the hood, after popping open the lever inside, there is a little pull tab here that you have to pull, and at the same time lift up the hood. And inside here we have a nice uh, good look at our diesel motor. Um, so this motor is a six-cylinder diesel engine. Um, we also have our coolant here as well as our radiator fans down here. We have our turbocharger over here. And uh, on removing these panels, we have access to the headlight assembly. Now, unfortunately, our vehicle, the headlight assembly uh, settings are broken. So some of the lights point upwards, others point right down on the ground. Up in here, we have interior amenities. Again, these are what the hoses look like for the central locking system and the air pump which also operates many other features of the vehicle. Removing this panel here will gain you access to the cabin filter, if you need to replace that for the aircon. Moving on to this side, we have our ABS over here, as well as one of the fuse boxes from the vehicle. And we have a very nice layout of what fuse does what um, in this box. The other fuse box I will get to in a moment, which is actually in the trunk. So closing the hood is as easy as it gets. Grab on to it, bring it nicely down, and nicely, firmly close it shut. Taking a look at some of the features in the trunk, once again, pushing the button releases the slatch, this lever. Um, once again, we have a fuse box over on this side with uh, some of the more passenger oriented fuses, such as the radio um, lighting and uh, things like that. Again, with a very nice diagram demonstrating which uh, mode does what down here. Um, if you need to ever replace the battery, the battery is, as I mentioned before, located right down here. And this is not a standard car battery. It's actually the size of an airplane battery, but still 12 watts. On this side, you have a very deep um, storage compartment for things like oils, rags, um, things that you need for maintenance on the side of the road. Um, and again, on this side, to access your light fixture, just pulling out on this, and you can change all your lights down here. Lifting up this mat, um, we gain access to the spare tires, and also the toolkit that comes standard on all Mercedes. W140s. Um, you can remove the toolkit, but just opening it like this, you get a couple of screwdrivers, uh, pliers, a number uh, 8 and a number 10 wrench, and um, you also can store your uh, extra bulbs in here. And pulling up on this, we gain access to the spare tire. Um, we also suggest keeping tow ropes in here, and the um, the jack that comes with the vehicle to lift up the car. And one more feature I'm going to demonstrate today um, is going to be the reverser um, antenna aids that um, are in this vehicle. So we're just going to turn the ignition on. I'm going to bring down that um, foil there and we're going to, pushing the brake pedal down, we're going to put her into reverse. Also making sure that we have our parking brake on. After putting the vehicle into reverse, you should notice that these two antennae came up and they come up about six inches, as well as the reverser lights, obviously. Um, but these antennae um, come up with air, compressed air using the pump inside the vehicle and they lift out uh, to help guide the vehicle when you're reversing so you can see where the corner is on the vehicle. And to retract it, I will just leave this camera here and I will put the car back in park. So I just put the car in park and it, le it leaves the antenna up here for a couple more moments before finally sucking them back in once again using a vacuum. 
There goes one and the other retracted as well. And I will show you um, them coming out one more time. So I'm going to go put it in reverse. And they come up nice and easily just like that. Now it's not suggested that you pull on these or push on these while they're extended because that can ruin um, the very fragile rubber that is found within these. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and liking and subscribing um, to this video. Um, hope you enjoy this. Um, if you have any questions regarding uh, any more of the features or you'd like me to go more in depth in some of the features, please do let me know in the comments. And uh, also expect a video explaining the central locking pump um, later in the future.